Welcome to Go After Dark. In Go After Dark, we code cool real-time effects and let other people worry about containers. Tonight, we'll be drawing lines, not in a this is where I draw the line kind of way, but in a literal sense where we will be drawing lines on our screen. We need lines a few places in our intro. It is not an essential part, but it is still part of a few of the effects we'll be doing. We should hopefully end up with some smooth anti-aliased lines. So let's get started. So drawing lines seems easy. You just go from A to B. That's also true to a certain extent, but there are some things we should consider along the way. Let's start by looking closely at some lines. I have put some here in Photoshop, which is pretty much what we want to end up with. If we zoom in, we can take a closer look. So this is black lines on a white background. We have horizontal or mostly horizontal lines, we have mostly vertical lines, and we have a line going across. One thing that we can see is that since these lines are one pixel in width, at any point there's only two pixels in one direction. So here on the horizontal line we have two pixels and the black is split between these two pixels. Same on the horizontal. That means in most cases, the value is split between only two points. We'll try to take advantage of that when we draw our lines. Other than that, the line is representing a fixed slope between two points. So let's see how we can define that in code. So this is the definition we have of a line. We have two 2D points with an X and a Y coordinate. And that basically means we want to draw a line from P1 to P2. Down here, I've implemented a function that does the actual drawing. First of all, we clip the lines to the screen. We'll get back to that in a, in a second. Then we figure out which of the directions is the longest, meaning which direction we should draw the line. We want to draw as few pixels as possible, so we try to, to do the line by incrementing one of the axes by one every time. In this piece of code, we try to find the longest axis. Then we figure out down here how much to increment the other axis on every step. Then we have a bit of rounding to take care of. Since we're dealing with floats, we have to make sure we don't run into rounding errors that will give us weird results. So in this part, we figure out that Y is the longer. Then we figure out if we're going from top to bottom or from bottom to the top. In each case, we increment or decrement Y by one. And we are adding a specific offset for every pixel we're drawing to the X coordinate. Same down here, except we are drawing one pixel at a time in the X direction either left to right or right to left. So to visualize this, I've loaded a small 3D object. And basically, I'm taking out all the points of the 3D object and all the edges, meaning the connections between the points. And then we'll try to draw these as a wireframe object. We do the rendering down here. What we do is we rotate the model, then we project it onto the screen. And then we go through each edge, determine if it's in front or behind the camera. And then we simply draw a line with the two points with the black color. So let's take a look at how that looks in practice. So here we have a wireframe model that's being rendered with the algorithm we just looked at. Since each line is just made of a single pixel, we of course don't have any anti-aliasing and it looks like very rough wireframe. Each pixel is actually set to the exact color we want, which is why it wasn't anti-aliased. 
We can also see the lines are clipped rather nicely to the edge of the screen. Let's take a look at how we are actually doing that. In general, clipping is really a pain in the behind. There, there's actually quite a lot of early demos that have quite bad clipping, where you see things moving weirdly on the edges of the screen. I have also implemented a couple of clippers in, in my time, but to be honest, I didn't want to bother with yet another one. So I found quite a, a nice algorithm. I put in a link to the uh, to description of the algorithm. Let's quickly take a look. So it basically defines the different scenarios of the lines. There's quite a nice explanation of uh, the different cases. Then there's a C++ implementation, which I basically just re-implemented in Go. The function returns a Boolean whether the clip line is actually visible, whether there's actually something left on the screen, which enables us to quickly discard the line and just don't try to draw it at all. So you can go through the details of it and uh, have a look if you're interested. One of the changes I did was to make sure that we can never draw outside the screen if the value is rounded down. Since we're dealing with floats, we have to be particularly careful about not overdrawing. But yeah, basically what it does is it adjusts the start and end point so it will always be on the screen. Up here, I've created an alternative version. All of the code except for the actual drawing is the same. If we look at the pixel drawing, we have two different versions now. So we have one when we are drawing a horizontal line and one when we're drawing a vertical line. So let's take a look at the horizontal. In this version, we are drawing two pixels vertically. What we do is we calculate the positions of the screen as a fixed point, meaning we have eight bits as a fraction. We then take out the fraction. We use that to weigh our pixels. Here we have a function that actually applies the weight. So it takes the existing input pixel. It takes two weights. The first one will be applied to the color we want to draw and the other one will be applied to the existing pixel. We then simply write the output pixel. So we do this for two pixels. We do the left one here and we do the right one if we have space enough in our image. The vertical draw of this is actually quite similar, except that it draws two pixels on top of each other. So we calculate the position, we calculate the weights, we then do it for the topmost pixel and for the pixel right below it. So let's go back and see how it looks. So here we simply change it to use the anti-aliased version. And here we go. So now we have some really nice smooth lines. It moves quite smoothly because we're using float points to define the start and end points of our lines. As you can also see, it's fairly performant. It, there's no big issues here we have to worry about. We're getting about 1200 frames per second. That's fine. So we can add other effects and still keep our 60 frame per second budget or whatever you want to hit. So yeah, that's actually it. That's how you draw nice anti-alias lines. I'll of course share the code as always. Thank you for watching the eighth episode of Go After Dark. In the next episode, we'll move on to drawing even smoother circles. Until then, you can visit afterdark.classpost.com and find links to the source code and even see the effect running in your browser. If you'd like to see more videos, remember to subscribe. You can also follow me on Twitter, where I'll also post when new episodes are out. If you have any feedback, you're welcome to share them in the comments below. Also, you can share your creations with the hashtag GoAfterDark on Twitter. But that's all for tonight. 
So thank you for your time and good night.